let's think about the Cartesian plane. One, two, three, one, two, three, negative one, negative two. Notice that if we have a collection of points, let's say one, two, two, one, three, one, and two, three. Right? This is a collection of points. Let, let me write them down. One, two, two, three, three, one, and two, negative one. This collection of points defines a relation. And when we have a relation, we can find the domain, which is in this case one, two, and three. And we can find the range, which is the collection of second entries, two, three, one, and negative one. The domain is the collection of first entries. And we can also decide if this relation is a function. Notice that in this case, for the number two, two is an element in the domain, and E appears twice in the relation as a first entry. For that reason, this relation is not a function. But the main observation here, the connection, is that you can define the relation either by listing the points or just by plotting the points in the Cartesian plane. Um, there is something somehow kind of magical and it's like when you have a curve in the plane then you are defining infinitely many points there are infinitely many points in in this curve and then you have a relation associated with this collection of points notice that for example, if this is one, two, three, four, and five, then we know that here the zero three is a point in the relation and zero five is a point in the relation. Then we have that this relation defined by this curve is not a function. And in general, we have that uh, when we have a relation, if we can find a vertical line that crosses the collection of points in more than one point, then that relation is not a function. This is called the vertical line test. Okay, but when we have a relation that is a function, that means that it passes the vertical line test, we have a function, and then with that function, we can find the values of that function. Let's do an example. Okay, this is a collection of points, and we can see that every vertical line crosses the graph at only one point and therefore this relation defines a function and in this case the domain when you think about every possible first entry we see that uh, for example 0 1 is a point in the relation but I cannot list them because there are infinitely many but anyway we can decide that the domain in this case is the closed interval from 0 to 4. Every point from 0 to 4 is part, is a first entry in this relation. And for the range, which is the set of all possible second entries, we see that any every point from 0 to 2, including 0 and including 2, is a point in the range. Uh, we can also uh, find what is f of 0. Remember that to find f of 0, we need to find a point in the relation or a point in the function of the form 0, comma something. And we know that this point, 0, comma 1, is a point in the relation, is a point in the graph. 
0, 0,1 is a point in the graph, that means that f of 0 is equal 1. We say that the value of the function at 0 is 1. Uh, for example, we can say that f of 1 is equal to because the point 1 comma 2 is a point in the in the graph. Uh, we also have that f of 1.5, we think about 1.5, this must be 1. f of 2 must be 0 because the point 2, 0 is a point in the graph. Uh, f of 4 is 1 because the point 4, 1 is a point in the graph. And we have that f of 3 must be one half because the point three one half is a point in the graph in general if you have a value x and you want to find a f of x what you need to do is you need to think about a vertical line and if x is in the domain that vertical line is going to cross only once at the graph then this point is of the form x y and this number here, the y, is the f of x. Notice that this is what I have done here. We have that to compute f of 3, we think about a vertical line, right? and then this vertical line crosses the graph at the point 3, 1 half, and for that reason, f of 3 is 1 half.